Let's dive into building an AWS Lambda function that returns back a result through API Gateway. To get started, I'm gonna go to a repo, uh, Noah Gift AWS Lambda here, and I'm gonna clone this. Let's go ahead and copy that and type in git clone. Now notice that it said I can't connect because I don't have an SSH key. So I'm gonna go ahead and create those SSH keys. SSH keygen dash T RSA press return a few times, and then I can actually uh, print out this public key here to give it to GitHub. So I'm gonna go through and say uh, cat, paste that out, and I'm gonna grab this whole block of text up to the end here, which is SSH RSA. Next, I'll go over to my GitHub profile and I will select uh, settings here. So if I go ahead and select settings, I've already got it open. Uh, I can scroll down to SSH and GPG keys create a new one, we'll call this uh, AWS Lambda uh, Dev. Here we go, paste that in, and it lasts for my password. And now that it's set up, I can go back here and actually just type in the up arrow until I get to that command, and then clone it. Now what I will wanna do is CD into this uh, AWS Lambda directory, because there's a, a script here that may or may not be useful depending on how much you use your Lambda environment. Uh, notice it's called resize here. And in particular, if you type in df space dash h, it will show you that there's only a couple gigs available by default with AWS Lambda uh, on Cloud9 when you're developing. And if you run this resize command, if I say chmod plus x and then run it, uh, what'll happen is that it'll resize the disk to be a 20 gig disk. So it make, gives me a little bit more room for work where I would be using things like containers, which can take up a lot of room. Now, if I run this uh, df-h command again, notice that there's a lot more room. So this is just a nice trick to be aware of, and it's something you can get from this repo. Now, uh, the, the next thing I'm going to do to get started here is I'm going to run a command called sam init. And if I type in sam space init, this will actually initialize a new Lambda function for me. So I'm gonna go ahead and say, yes, I wanna do that. I wanna do a quick start template, so I'll select one. And then which kind of package would you like to build? Um, you know, either a zip, an artifact is a zip uploaded to S3, or an image artifact is an image uploaded to an ECR image repository. Now with this one, uh, this is actually a containerized version of a Lambda and it would live in Elastic Container Registry. I'm gonna go ahead and select two here. Uh, and then notice it gives me some options for base images. So you know, what do I wanna do? Uh, there's lots of different programming languages. I'm gonna select four here. Uh, if we scroll you know, down here, you can see there's several options. I'm gonna select Amazon Python 3.8 base. So go ahead and select that. And then what do we wanna call this? Let's go ahead and call this um, Hello World. Uh, Lambda, and we'll call this 2021. There we go. And it's gonna go through and uh, give me some additional information here. So do I want a quick start, uh, let's say maybe a scikit-learn project, which is, which is pretty neat, uh, or do I want to go through and build just a regular Hello World application? I'm gonna go through here and say Hello World, uh, Lambda image application, there we go. Uh, and then the next steps can be read out here in a readme file. So uh, here we go. Uh, I'm going to go to these next steps here uh, inside of this project. And let's go ahead and look at this. If I go to this Hello World Lambda project, you can see there's a readme that goes through and tells me step by step what I need to do. So these might change slightly in the future. There might be slightly different versions, but Salmonit is a great way to get started. So I'm gonna go through and just do exactly what it says. So it's gonna say Sam build. So let's go ahead and uh, uh, run that first. So I'm gonna CD into this directory that I created, and then I'm gonna type in um, Sam build. There we go. And now it's gonna go through and it's gonna um, dockerize a Lambda uh, environment for me. Uh, and what's great about this is I can even test things locally by using this new, new containerized workflow for AWS Lambda. So really you can think of a container as a way of emulating what's gonna happen in production. So there we go, we've got this thing 
uh, created. Now, if I, if I want to look at the actual application here itself, um, it's going to be inside of this, this Hello World. And notice here that it, it really is a very simple application that just you know basically returns back Hello World. Uh, if I wanted to change this, I could change this into other things. But here we go, we've got this uh, Hello World application. Uh, and now if I want to invoke it, I can, I can do what it says. I can say Sam local invoke. And this will actually go through here and uh, test this out, right? So it'll, it'll give me the ability to invoke it. There we go. We can see that it actually called it. So really we're, we're done in a sense in testing this locally. So the next step would be to do a deploy. So let's go ahead and uh, scroll back you know, through here and, and see you know, how we would do this. Well, what I could do is I could say Sam deploy guided. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to say Sam deploy guided. And then this will go through and ask me what I want to call this stack. Uh, we'll, we'll again call this hello world um, stack, uh, maybe maybe 2021. 20, and then it'll ask me to select the region. We'll say US East, that's good. Uh, what re image repository? Sure, let's go ahead and use that. Leave the defaults here uh, for image repository for hello world function. Um, now notice that it will it will actually want me to give it a location to put this containerized image. So uh, what I can do is actually go to the uh, container registry here real quick and uh, create a new repo just for this. And we'll just call this hello world uh, repo like that. <clears throat> and let's go ahead and, and create this uh, repository. And by the way, it doesn't want uppercase, so I'll go ahead and change that. We'll just say, hello world repo. There we go. And we'll scroll scroll down here. And there we go. And I can just copy this URI uh, or copy the repository name. Let's go ahead and try that. So we'll say, does that work? Uh-oh, it doesn't like that one. So let's go ahead and do it again. This time we'll put in the, uh, the full URI. So I'll go ahead and uh, copy this. And from here, again, we can just say hello world uh, 2021. Go through here, paste this in. Are you sure you want to deploy? Yeah, we'll go ahead and do that. Allow Sam to create the, the necessary permissions. We'll go ahead and do that. Um, that's fine. We don't care about authentication. And then also we want to save the arguments to a file and then create this config file. There we go. So basically what's happening now is it's taking this local container and it's pushing it to the Amazon container registry. And then once we do this, uh, it will then be able to deploy it from that containerized environment. Uh, so let's go ahead and uh, watch this thing uh, in action. And this is also one of the great things about using the Cloud9 environment is that it allows me to uh, have a fast interaction between uh, services that are in AWS. And so in particular, uh, inside of AWS, uh, you're able to you know, push, push your code into a new environment, um, go through and uh, get access to you know, really data center to data center speed uh, because it's not my laptop, which could be, let's say, on a wireless network or something like that. Okay, it looks like it's um, getting close to being done here. There we go, pushed. And now notice that um, it's uploading this now to the final location, right? So it's 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 putting the, these final changes here. Perfect. And it says, do you really want to deploy? And if we scroll out and look at the output, you can see it's using a infrastructure as code service called Cloud Formation to deploy it. Yes, we do. We want to deploy this change. Uh, and what will happen is that I can actually um, after this goes through and deploys, uh, I can actually go through and look at that Lambda application in production as well. And so that's one of the useful things about um, using this whole end-to-end -end feedback loop is that it really solves the production deployment aspect of deploying a Lambda function. So this, this really is using best practices from AWS. They're all combined inside of this tool. And then it goes through and, and just with a couple commands allows you to deploy this to production. So once this is deployed, what will happen is I'll be able to invoke it by using this tool over here, uh, AWS Explorer, 
uh, and also I'll be able to invoke it by using uh, the, the function itself in AWS Lambda. Notice that it's available now with API Gateway as well. It's, it's hooking up all these final components. Uh, and so let's, let's uh, give this just a second longer here. And then what will happen is that I'll be able to test it out. So now notice here that it gave me this endpoint. So if I just scroll here, because again, it's a get function, it just returns back a result. We can, we can actually curl this and it will return back a payload for us. There we go. We, we can see that hello world is working. And so even if I put this into a web browser as well, uh, you can see there we go, hello world. So we've, we've been able to go full end to end and deploy it. If we wanna look at it inside of the AWS environment, I can also go to that Lambda function and we should be able to see it as well. There we go, there's a hello world function. It's been deployed. You can see it's been last modified. And I can actually invoke it if I wanted to directly inside of here. So if I go through here and, and just uh, give it an empty payload, doesn't accept anything, we can actually say invoke and notice that it says the same thing. It says hello world. And, and even further, notice that here's the trigger, this API gateway trigger, uh, is that it'll give me the URL as well. I can invoke it that way. Yet one more way to invoke it is, again, if I go to AWS here and I go to Lambda, I could go through and find that hello world function uh, and, and invoke it. It's I think it's here. here. Here we go, hello world 2021. If I right click, I can say uh, invoke on AWS and notice that it gives me back this neat little uh, uh, widget here. And I can say, do I wanna uh, give it anything? No, we don't care, just invoke it. There we go, we can see that it works. So there's several ways to test your Lambda function, uh, including uh, basically built-in integration into the terminal. Personally, I like the command line. I think that's one of the better ways to test a Hello World application.